the main goal of our team is to stimulate the immune system to treat the cancer. And this specific study aims to address the question whether it is required to stimulate the mucosal immunity to induce the regression of mucosal tumors. Most cancer vaccines, even against mucosal cancer, are tested in animal models with tumor grafted under the skin and the vaccine delivered into the mask. We wonder what if the immune cells activated by the vaccine simply couldn't reach the tumor in the real life clinical context that is the mucosa. In the past years, immunotherapy have provided some clinical success. For example, there is now an approved cancer vaccine for prostate cancer. However, for many cancers, there are the failure in the development of immunotherapy. It is why we address whether to treat mucosal tumors such as lung cancer, head and neck cancer, colorectal lung cancer, we have to also stimulate the mucosal immunity. And we knew from infectious disease vaccine studies that when C8 T cells receive home instructions uh, directing them to the mucosa, this strengthens the, the immune response against the mucosal pathogens. So we hypothesized that the same could be true for controlling the growth of mucosal tumors. To test this hypothesis, we created more relevant models of lung and head and neck cancer and compared to routes for administrating our chosen vaccine. That was the intramuscular route and the intranasal route. We chose a vaccine strategy taking into account the use of STXB7 uh, that consists on the B subunit of Shiga toxin, which uh, has been shown to target mucosal dendritic cells. And this vector was coupled to the E7 protein um, from the HBV16 virus, which is a tumor antigen. And we tested the vaccine against uh, E7 expressing tumors in mice, both for head and neck and lung cancer. These experiments show that uh, the intranasal route of administration was far more effective than the traditional intramuscular route, both as a prophylactic treatment, so um, it protected mice from developing tumors, and a therapeutic one. Uh, it helped them fight off pre-existing tumor, they shrink the tumor. So next we wanted to identify possible mechanisms for the superior control of tumor growth after local intranasal immunization. And we analyzed the cells present in two locations critical to the immune response against uh, mucosal cancer, mucosal draining lymph nodes and also within the tumor. CD8 positive T cells specific for E7 were only detected in these lymph nodes when the vaccine uh, was administered intranasally. And compared to intramuscular administration, intranasal vaccination also allowed many more CD8 positive T cells uh, to infiltrate the tumor. Of these cells, uh, considerably more, is, uh, more uh, were specific for E7 protein, 16% versus 0.4%. To understand why intranasal vaccination was able to recruit the ST cells to the mucosal site, we examined their phenotype. Immunization by the intranasal route led to the higher expression of CD49A, which is a mucosal int integrin. When we blocked the CD49A with a neutralizing antibody, the number of CD8 T cells infiltrating the tumor dropped significantly, along with the efficacy of the vaccine. We found that dendritic cells in the lungs were responsible for this crucial increase of CD49A expression on T cells following the intranasal vaccination. Without vaccination or when, when taken from the spleen, dendritic cells did not lead to the necessary expression of CD49A. Finally, it was important to assess whether the results were relevant uh, to humans with uh, lung or head and neck cancer. So we analyzed the tumor infiltrating CD8 plus T cells from samples of human mucosal cancers. 48.9% of these uh, um, cancer express CD49A uh, 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 compared to only 14.7% uh, of the non-mucosal tumors tested. And so our study 
will lead to a modification of the design of cancer vaccine to more specifically stimulate the mucosal immunity, for example, by changing the route of immunizations and using intranasal immunizations or oral route. So maybe our study will have some clinical impact of a new product such as the cancer vaccine and the way to administer them in the patients.